earlier this year, we got to take a look at the 2022 Subaru WRX. We did a full walk around to get a good idea and understanding for what the sedan has to offer buyers this year. There's a new platform, new technology, and new interior, but that's not all that's brand new. Today I'm sitting next to the WRX GT, a brand new trim that sits at the top of the trim levels for the 2022 model year. And what you are going to notice is that there's more of a plush experience when you step inside and get behind the wheel. But also we're getting our first look at the rebranding of the CVT for Subaru as they have reworked this transmission to make it more responsive when upshifting and downshifting, but also to make it feel more like a traditional automatic. And I'm really intrigued to find find out how this car performs on the road, especially with the active dampers, where you can adjust your driving experience, where you can get more of a stiffer suspension or a softer suspension, depending on what your driving style is. And that's why I am here. I'm going to take a deep dive into the sedan to see how it compares to the prior model year, but also to see how it compares to other rivals in this segment, and also see if it is the perfect sports sedan at around $42,000. Now, before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. And speaking of inventory, Subaru of Wakefield is home to the largest selection of Subarus here in New England. If you're looking for an Outback Wilderness, a Forester Wilderness, Ascent, Impreza, or Legacy, this is definitely the place to go. They're a top 10 dealership when it comes to sales, a top 10 dealership when it comes to service, but best of all, and most importantly, they're focused on the community and giving back to those in need. They're a great dealership from top to bottom, and I know for a fact you're definitely gonna love your experience if you do buy a Subaru at this dealership. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. The Subaru WRX has a long and proud pedigree of being a sports car for the purists. A car that enthusiasts could point to and say, that's an attainable vehicle that gives me the performance I'm looking for and best of all, a six-speed manual transmission that provides an instant connection that some competitors aren't offering. Today in 2022, the manual is an endangered species, as younger generations are more accustomed to letting technology take control of the driving experience. But also, the development of automatic transmissions has elevated the overall performance of sports cars compared to 20 years ago. Subaru first introduced the CVT in the WRX last generation, sparking controversy. But now with the revamped and rebranding of the unpopular alternative to the six-speed manual, Subaru could very well be redefining how we look at CVTs moving forward. Starting off with pricing, the WRX GT comes in at just over $42,000, sitting at the top of the trim levels for 2022. Without the option to choose the manual over Subaru's performance transmission, it's given us the opportunity to understand exactly why buyers should give the sedan a chance, rather than completely dismissing it like we have in the past. And despite the eye rolls from WRX loyalists, what the GT is providing and showcasing could very well give us a glimpse into the future plans for this brand, as the lineup continues to improve over time. The key difference here for the GT trim is the sport-tuned four-wheel independent suspension with electronically controlled dampers, which is a first for the WRX, allowing you to customize the driving dynamics to your liking. But more importantly, is reflective of where the sports car market is heading, as this is an opportunity to snatch Volkswagen GTI and Golf R buyers away from their hatchbacks. From an exterior design perspective, you can distinguish this trim by taking a look at the 18-inch wheels in Macrae finish, and this is unique to the GT. Standard is steering responsive LED headlights and LED fog lights for the modern look. But going one step further, you can add some character to the WRX by opting for a carbon fiber or gloss black rear spoiler, an illuminated grille emblem, and splash guards for a sleeker appearance. Under the hood, the GT is powered by a 2.4-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, producing 271 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, 
and is paired with the Subaru Performance Transmission, which is available on other trims as well. Subaru has been adamant in saying that this isn't a CVT. And while we beg to differ, we have to agree that it's not like any other CVT we've ever experienced. Yes, it mimics gear shifts, but when put in Sport Plus or Individual mode, the transmission responds and acts like an automatic, displaying what gear you're in on the digital display and replicating rev matching on downshifts. Best of all, there's a meaningful impact when driving aggressively, and we'll get into more of this later on during the test drive. As always, you will have Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive system, allowing you to take on winter road conditions. And for fuel economy, you're looking at right around 19 miles per gallon in the city and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you get by heated Recaro Ultra Suede seats, which that alone is worth paying extra for the GT trim, as the support, bolstering, and firmness suits the WRX exceptionally well but also will complement drivers who want to go on some winding back roads for a spirited cruise. The driver's side will be power adjustable, whereas passengers will have to find the ideal seating position. For the rest of the interior, there's no significant differences compared to the rest of the WRX trims, as you have a small digital information display between the analog gauges. And since we don't have the manual, paddle shifters will allow you to roll through the gears yourself. Then moving over to the infotainment system, you'll have Subaru's 11.6 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation and the 11 speaker Harman Kardon premium audio system. As mentioned during the full walk around review of the Limited, button clutter has been kept to a minimum, but there is physical dials for the volume and tuning knobs and you can raise and lower the temperature for the dual zone climate control thanks to the buttons mounted on either side of the screen. However, fan speed and direction will have to be accessed by using the head unit, and it's here where you can turn on the three-level heated seats. One feature that's exclusive to the WRX GT is the ability to customize the drive modes, most notably the active dampers that ultimately affect ride quality. You can also adjust steering input and the aggressiveness of the replicated gear shifts. It should be worth noting that when in comfort or normal, the transmission acts like a traditional CVT. And it's only when put in Sport Plus mode where you receive a dynamic driving experience when accelerating. You have a rear backup camera with trajectory to go along with reverse automatic braking. And rounding out the front seating area of the WRX, there will be a cubby for a smartphone with two USB inputs. And above will be a moonroof to let in some natural light to the interior. Now moving on to the second row seating area, I want to focus more on the comfort aspect for the GT trim rather than talking about the leg, headroom, and shoulder room just because there is no difference between the GT and the Limited when it comes to interior dimensions. However, it's the comfort where I feel the GT goes one step beyond where the Subaru WRX currently is. Where the ultra suede inserts for the second row seats provide a good amount of support. Also, they keep you in place too. So if the driver is driving aggressively to showcase what this car is all about, you're not gonna be swaying at all. They do provide some form of bolstering, which I think is definitely great if you wanna have people in the second row at all times. But also, one thing that really stands out to me and really adds a sense of quality and refinement is that the ultra suede inserts make their way on the door panels for the second row and also the nice soft touch padding on the door rests as well. That's something that I really want to see at this price point at around $42,000. And Subaru has definitely focused on giving you more of that plush and upscale feel for this trim. Now, moving on to the center seat. The center hump is very aggressive, which will take away from legroom. However, there are some good placements for your feet. But for cars of this size, mostly you can only fit two people back here on the outboard seats, and the WRX is no different. The car is not wide enough to try fitting and squeezing in that third person, so most likely this car will be limited to just four people overall. And then for the driver's side, I adjusted the seat to someone of my height, around 5'5", 
and I have plenty of legroom to work with here, but it all comes back to the comfort because just like up front with the Recaros, the ultra suite inserts continue on for the second row. And to me, it just adds a lot of quality that might have been lacking for the Limited. Even though the new Deborah X is great all around when it comes to the interior, the ultra suede inserts and even just some of the more softer touch materials on the door panels and even the dashboard to me go a long way. And I think that if you're looking for a sports sedan that doesn't have a manual transmission, that you just want to drive a car that is sporty, a bit aggressive, but also a car that is still family friendly, I think that's where the GT trim will come into play and be a great daily driver. Also back here you will have two USB inputs. And rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, of course you're not going to get a power trunk, although there is a button on the dashboard left of the steering wheel where you can pop open the trunk when you're still behind the wheel so that way you don't have to walk out and manually open it. But behind the second row seat, you're going to have right around 12 and a half cubic feet of room to work with, which doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot. However, I was able to fit all my camera gear today and then some. So that's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod. And if I really wanted to, I could go grocery shopping or fit bags of luggage if I was going on a road trip. If you are using the WRX as a rally car, so if you're part of the car community, you might be going on cruises with some friends, you'll definitely have enough room for that luggage for the weekend, but also you can have room for your co-pilot's bags and maybe even some friends in the second row seating area. And really, I think this car is practical and daily drivable, and that's why I think the 2022 WRX is definitely a hit when it comes to its practicality and even when it comes to the interior spacing. Then, of course, with the second row seats folded, you're going to have more space space so that way if any longer items such as skis and snowboards you can fit them back there no problem. And then beneath the floor mat you are going to have a fix a flat kit so that way if you do encounter a flat you can at least patch that up and get to your destination safely. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for let's go on that test drive. All right so let's take the GT out for a test drive to see how it performs, how it handles, how it drives to other sports cars in this market, like the GTI, like the Veloster N, and see really how this transmission works, since it's a CVT, but also the active dampers. That, to me, is something that's really interesting, and I want to see how the driving dynamics change with each mode. Now, I am going to start in individual mode, so it is more sporty. It's a bit more aggressive. Let's check that out one more time. Actually, we're in sport. Got to put an individual. Have to put an individual. So steering's gonna be sport, suspension sport, all-wheel drive sport. Just put it in manual mode. See if it mimics the gear shifts. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. The fact that I can engage those paddle shifters, pretty nice. Road noise isn't too bad at highway speeds, actually, which is pretty good. Also, there's not a lot of noise from this engine, either. I want to see what the handling is like. Immediate mimic of the downshifts. So let's go around this rotary here and see what the handling is like in sport mode. It is somewhat light. It's not too heavy like a sports car, but it's very direct. Gives you some feedback there. And as you can tell, I put it back in automatic, but it shows what gear I'm in. So I'm in fourth. That's pretty cool. So it's not really a traditional CVT in that sense. A lot of power to get around slower drivers. Very nimble handling too. Yeah, the CVT definitely mimics the gear shifts. It's not like a dual clutch, but it certainly does the job. 
<laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. One thing I will say, though, is that the suspension, even though it's in sport, it's not as rigid as the GTI that I own. So, still somewhat soft. And as you can tell, the lane centering definitely kicked in there, but I didn't want to hit a pothole, so that wouldn't have been good. <laughs> it has a good kick. It has a good kick to it. I was not expecting this to be very fun at all, to be honest. I thought that with it being a CVT and really not having the ability to really roll through the gears yourself and have that raw feel, I'm actually pretty impressed here. You know, dare I say that this feels like a traditional automatic. It's quick shifting. Oh, the handling. Love the handling. <laughs> yeah, to tone it down a bit. I was not expecting to have this much fun with this car. The Recaros provide a good amount of bolstering, very aggressive. And they're pretty comfortable, even though they are firm. Now that would be expected for a sports sedan, but still, not that bad at all. So let's change the driving mode here. Let's go to comfort. So now it's a bit more dialed back. It's relaxed. Also, what I noticed too is that the transmission no longer shows what gear I'm in. So now I'm probably getting more of that CVT experience. Yeah, now I'm feeling the CVT. It's pretty interesting that they're able to engineer that where it feels like every other Subaru in comfort mode, but then when you put it in sport, it's very aggressive, very enthusiast driven, and it's a car you wanna drive on a daily basis. The suspension is softer, I'm noticing. Steering is super light. So if you're somebody that isn't all about the WRX tradition, you're looking for a daily at around $40,000, you wanna have that performance, that you want something a step above the Impreza, then I think this could definitely work for you for sure. Certainly daily drivable. I love the materials that Subaru used for this car. Nice soft touch padding on even the dashboard as well, the lower portion of the dashboard with the ultra suede inserts and the ultra suede panels really nice here really truly nice i am i don't want to say impressed but i'm 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 surprised i i'm genuinely surprised so i think a lot of people a lot of journalists are going to pass up on the automatic or cvt they're always going to focus on the six-speed manual but since there's not a lot of people out there that's reviewing the gt let me say let me say this this is actually a pretty fun peppy little car so I put the WRX in normal, and that did change up the driving dynamics very slightly, actually. Uh, steering is a bit tighter, a little heavier. Also, I'm noticing that the exhaust note's just a little bit louder, so they're definitely pumping in some of that audio for sure. But it's still acting like a CVT. Let's put it in sport. Yep, it's getting aggressive here. I'm noticing that the transmission is a bit more aggressive holding on the gears a little longer the dampers do get a bit stiffer for sure it's not as soft going over some of the imperfections in the road let's put in sport plus and now it's showing me what gear it's in and it's definitely a bit more on edge this is the mode that i would choose for sure What I will say though is that when it comes to the road noise or the interior noise, it's actually rather quiet in here. It's very well insulated, but also the engine isn't really making a lot of noise either. So it's not like a loud experience. You might be compelled to put on an exhaust. It just, it takes the corners with ease. <laughs> it's fun. It's just fun. I could cruise around in this car all day 
even though it's not a traditional automatic, it's still, I think, pretty aggressive, and it's what you expect for a car in this segment. I think Subaru's done a great job with this sports performance transmission or whatever they call it. I think it's definitely a next-gen CVT for them, and I'd actually like to see that across the board for Subaru, whether it is an Outback or a Forester. I think this is definitely the way to go, but also it opens the door for a Crosstrek WRX, where you want something a bit more practical, go with the Crosstrek. I, 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 could do, I could totally see them dropping in the same engine in that crossover. So the question here is, can you buy a GT and not regret passing up on the manual transmission? And after about 20 minutes or so, I actually like this transmission. Even though it wouldn't be my first choice, I think if you're somebody who doesn't want to buy a manual, you don't know how to drive stick, you don't care to learn how to drive stick, and you're looking for a daily driver that is sporty, that's fun to drive, that puts a smile on your face, while also giving you the aggressive seats up front that are Recaro's, Ultra Suede, and I think the interior to me is definitely more upscale than the Limited that I had reviewed a couple months ago. This, this to me, I think is a more complete sedan than the last generation with the CVT. The CVT with the WRX for the prior model year just didn't work. I think a lot of people definitely passed up on it. Whereas this could definitely be a great alternative for somebody who doesn't want to drive stick. I think the ride quality is good. The driving dynamics, the suspension, the active dampers, all together, it creates, for me, a more complete car in 2022. Now, some people will argue that it doesn't feel as raw, that it's lost its rawness, that it's a bit too soft, that if you want something a bit more hardcore, you get, you're gonna have to go with the last generation WRX or STI. But for somebody in 2022 looking for a sports sedan at around $40,000, that also wants to have some of the modern technology, wants to have the adaptive suspension, and wants to have a car that even though it is a CVT, you can still have that fun rowing through the gears yourself with the paddle shifters. I think that's exactly what this car is. And even though you can opt for automatic for lower trims for the WRX, I think the GT trim takes things one step further, and this is exactly what I want to see from Subaru and for this sedan. Now, I would like to see a manual transmission make its way on this trim, because I think a lot of enthusiasts will love the Recaro seats. They provide a good amount of bolstering and support, and I just think that it's a great value at around $40,000, especially when you look at the pricing for a GTI and a Veloster N. I think this is a great replacement for that. And as we've already gone over with the practicality and the seating situation, I think this is a great all-around car. So to wrap up this review, what are my final thoughts and takeaways for the 2022 Subaru WRX GT? Since we only have one transmission, let's focus on that first. The CVT for the prior generation just didn't fit the personality of the WRX. Whereas Subaru has retooled the CVT for this generation, and I think it actually does quite well for this particular model year. Now, I do think that a lot of enthusiasts will go with the six-speed manual, and I think for myself, even though I'm not somebody that likes driving stick, I'd probably go with the six-speed as well. And really, when it comes to Subaru's philosophy for this generation, I think they're really trying to gear you towards the manual rather than the automatic or CVT just because you're paying a premium for the GT trim to get the Recaro seats, the Ultra Suede inserts, and all you get is that CVT. I would like to see a manual option for this trim because I think a lot of enthusiasts are going to love these Recaros, but also I think the interior is more memorable than the Limited I had featured about two months ago. I love the fact you have active dampers. I want to see that across the board where buyers and drivers can customize their driving experience. And if they do commute on a daily basis with this car, they can have that more softer suspension and use the stiffer suspension for the weekend or the track. 
But I love what this car is offering though. Even though it's not a traditional automatic, it's not something that's gonna really go head to head with a dual clutch like we see with the Veloster N or Volkswagen GTI. But I think that for the 97% of consumers that don't drive manual, this is a great option where you do get that performance, you get that driving experience, and you can have a lot of fun at a price point at around $40,000. But I do love the fact that this car does feel a bit more premium and upscale than other trims and even some competitors as well in this price range. Even though I think a lot of buyers are going to steer clear of the GT trim just because there is no manual option, this is a great alternative for buyers looking for comfort, refinement, and quality while also still getting fun and engaging driving dynamics. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.